You're looking at a unique artifact from the Yongle period of the Ming Dynasty sometime in the early 1400s. It's a Ming Chinese take on a Tibetan votive sword. Every inch of it is crawling with highly stylized detail and Buddhist symbology. It's very cool. There's a bit of a backstory to it, and maybe I'll get to that in another video. I've always wanted a replica of it. I'm a guy who goes into a museum and thinks, oh man, I want that in my home. Where can I get a replica? As it happens, there are several replica versions for sale online. Uh, they differ wildly from one another and have varying degrees of accuracy to the original. Some are not bad, some are kind of wonky, uh, but one or two stand out as being fairly faithful recreations. Retail prices for these are all over the place, ranging from reasonable to, holy crap, you gotta be kidding me. Believe it or not, one of the most accurate versions is also the least expensive. So I broke down and ordered one. Here it is, and I'm going to review it. Now, if you're only into backyard cutting, or you're only into wushu or tai chi, this video probably will not interest you. So it arrives in the typical cheap sword box. Of this we will speak no more. Open it, and your first impression is how visually striking this sword is. The workmanship and construction are about average, about what you'd expect. But the level of detail from the pommel all the way down the scabbard is really pretty impressive. They took some artistic license with the design. For example, they brought down the lower jaw of the monster so that it's more symmetrical with the front of the face. Also, these engravings here aren't exact. They've got this double dragon thing going on. But that said, everything has the right flavor and it hits all the right notes. There are other details they could have easily ignored but didn't. For example, the fittings are different from front to back. Including the pommel. Halfway down the scabbard, the lattice pattern changes into this lovely Tibetan thunderbolt pattern, just as it does on the real thing. And I should mention that all this metalwork is completely open. You can actually see through all these little openings. Whoever designed this replica really wanted to do it justice. The sword feels solid. There's no rattling, nothing loose, nothing that would indicate that you wasted your money. The blade is short and stocky, and thicker than it probably should be. It's got this cheesy double fuller, which I dislike, but if I'm honest, I don't dislike it as much as I thought I would. The description said it's 1060 carbon steel. It's unsharpened, but you could sharpen it and cut something with it, I suppose. It's no doubt got a decent tang inside the grip, as all Chinese wushu swords do. Uh, I wouldn't think this crazy double fuller would be ideal for slashing, though. And anyway, I didn't buy it for that purpose. I own real cutting swords for that. Sooner or later, I'll replace the blade with something lighter and more practical. This one's a bit on the heavy side to do sword forms with. Uh, but for now, I'm happy with it as a display piece to go with my other Buddhist collectibles. And I look forward to explaining what it is when friends come over. Otherwise, there are some slight imperfections here and there, but nothing you wouldn't expect at this price point. And I already feel like I got more than I paid for, so I'm not going to sweat the small stuff. Final verdict, I'm really satisfied with my purchase. Whoever made this really did a good job of imitating the look of the Yongla sword. It's probably the most visually interesting thing that I own. I can't stop looking at it. I know it's just a cheap copy, and it's not really the right color, but it somehow gives me the same sense of stillness that I feel when I see images of the original. If you like it, I highly recommend it, but only this particular version, so make sure you're getting the right one and don't overpay for it.